Today we're in the archives at Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio, the Special Collections and Archives Department where the Wright Brothers Collection lives. The Wright Brothers Collection has a really great home here at Wright State University. Obviously from our name, Wright State University, you can tell that we're named for Wilbur and Orville Wright. And the university carries on that inventive and creative spirit of the Wright Brothers. So it's very appropriate for their manuscript materials and photographs to be right here. There's power in the story of all of this invention and creativity and, and that carries over to why the collections at Wright State, uh, here at Wright State, we like to, to think that we're carrying on that legacy of the Wright Brothers and that innovative and creative spirit. In the Wright Brothers collection here at Wright State, we have the Wright Brothers report cards, Wilbur and Orville's record of what they did at school. And so here we've got a few report cards of Wilbur, and he was quite a good student actually. In algebra, he's getting in the 80s and 90s most of the time, so he was a pretty good student. He went to Central High School in Dayton and also Richmond High School in Indiana. So the report cards really let us know what they were studying in school and what their foundation was for their future experiments. We've also got Orville's report cards, which, which are not necessarily as good as Wilbur's. He was not as good a student. This one is from Central High School in Dayton, and Orville has gotten a 75 in algebra, which you might think is kind of a low score for somebody who's going to go on and invent the airplane. But, um, but Orville was really inquisitive. He just didn't like organized, the organized classroom. Um, so report cards, lots of fun to look at. Our young visitors really enjoy looking at these and learning about what Wilbur and Orville were studying in school. Once they got out of high school, they um, got into the printing business. This is an actual newspaper that the Wright brothers printed. It's the West Side News. This one didn't run for very long, but it was a community newspaper. Orville Wright is listed as the publisher in this one. Eventually, Wilbur would add his name to it and be listed as an editor as well. So lots of neighborhood stories um, about the Hawthorne Street area that they lived in, about the businesses that were there and things that were going on in the neighborhood. One of the really um, interesting things we have in the collection is this photograph album. This was put together by C.H. Cloudy, who was a reporter for the New York Herald. And he took lots of photographs of Orville flying at Fort Myer, Virginia in 1908 and 1909, when Orville was trying to sell the airplane to the U.S. Army Signal Corps. And it includes newspaper clippings and original photographs documenting all the flights in 08 and 09 down at Fort Myer, Virginia. It includes lots of photographs of the crash that Orville was in that killed Lieutenant Selfridge, the first aircraft accident victim. Um, when Orville had that crash, his sister Catherine left her teaching job in Dayton and went to Fort Myer, Virginia to nurse him back to health and be by his side. And I have a letter that I want to read a little bit out of. This letter was written by Catherine from the Post Hospital at Fort Myer, and this is September 22, 1908. Just a line to tell you that I've been with Orv all night and he's had a good night. It's, a now, it's now about half past four. I'm going home to bed about six. Sunday night he was miserably uncomfortable and I stayed tonight to see what I could do to help things. Another item that we have in the collection is this item. This is the original contract that the Wright brothers signed with the U.S. Army Signal Corps for the sale of the first airplane. And the specifications that the Signal Corps wanted, it's only two pages long, much shorter than a contract today. But if you look at the original contract itself, you can see that it was for one heavier than air flying machine. And the purchase price was $25,000. And then the Wright brothers received more money the faster they flew, the higher they flew, the more weight they carried as far as a passenger and their speed and it's signed Wright Brothers by Orville Wright. Um, they shared everything. They took credit for everything together. It was a joint project, a partnership. As the Wright Brothers went on in their career, they traveled a lot to sell the airplane, and they went to France first. Wilbur spent almost all of 1908 in France demonstrating the airplane, and then into 1909. This particular album is the Aero Club of America album, 
put together by Mrs. Leon Bollet. Um, Leon Bollet gave Wilbur room in his factory in Le Mans, France to construct the airplane and fly there locally at the, at the local Unadir racetrack. So this album is full of amazing photographs, but the album's full of amazing pictures of a lot of the crowds that came to see Wilbur fly. So you can see the women in their hats and fancy dresses and, and children and bicycles and carriages and so forth. A great photo album. One of the real treasures of the collection is this, of course. This is an original print of the first powered flight. This was printed from the glass plate negative from the Wright Brothers camera. They had a local life-saving man at the life-saving station there at Kitty Hawk take this image when they were um, attempting this flight on December 17th. And the life-saving station person was told to squeeze the bulb on the camera when the, if the plane lifted off. And he did that, but when they asked him if he got the shot later, he wasn't sure. He was so excited. And the brothers didn't know if this picture came out until they got back to Dayton, because this is where they actually developed the glass plate. Something that goes along with that is this item. This is a diary that their father kept. Their father was Bishop Milton Wright, and he kept a diary from 1857 until 1917 when he died. And he recorded all of his family's um, comings and goings and accomplishments and things that they were doing and things he was doing. This particular diary is from December 17, 1903. And Milton Wright, their father, is he's just received a telegram from Orville and Wilbur saying that they had flown, that they'd had success. And so he records that telegram in the diary. And he says, in the afternoon about 5.30, we received the following telegram from Orville, dated Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, December 17th. Bishop M. Wright, success, four flights Thursday morning, all against a 21-mile wind. Started from level with engine power alone. Average speed through the air, 31 miles, longest 59 seconds. Home Christmas, Orville. So... They've done this amazing thing, but they're going to be home for Christmas, and that's, that's one of the key things to remember is that family was, was still important in the middle of all of this experimenting and travel. Another thing I always like to share is this photo album. This is from 1911. Orville goes back to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. He takes along with him his brother Lauren and Lauren's son Horace, who was better known as Buster or Bus. That was his nickname. They go back to Kitty Hawk in 1911 to do some gliding experiments. And this is one of my favorite pictures from this album. And it shows them all three in a boat. Orville and his brother Lauren are sitting on the side of the boat. And Orville is in his usual suit with his vest and coat. Looks like he's got long underwear on because it was probably pretty cold down there that, that year. His pant legs are all rolled up. He's, got his, he's sitting on the side of the boat, and he's got a big floppy hat on. And it just shows that human side of Orville and his brother and his nephew fishing. Something else I want to show you is this particular album. This is the Aero Club of America album, and it was presented to Orville and Wilbur on the occasion of the awarding of the Aero Club of America medals um, at the White House in June of 1909. This particular album contains lots of congratulatory letters, testimonials, things like that. Here is a letter from President William Howard Taft to the Wright brothers in honor of what they've accomplished. Also in this album is a photograph of the Wright brothers at the White House with, with William Howard Taft and their sister Catherine is there with them. And there are all these dignitari dignitaries from the Aero Club of America with their original signatures here and this is William Howard Taft at the White House and you see Wilbur and Orville and Catherine and other members of the Aero Club. But Taft signed this for Miss Catherine Wright with the best wishes of William Howard Taft. And then her signature is actually on the back of the photograph. The last thing I want to show you that's very special is another diary of their father, Milton Wright. And this diary is from 1912. And in this diary, Milton is recording the death of Wilbur from typhoid fever. Um, Wilbur was only 45 years old when he contracted typhoid and passed away in the middle of the patent fights. And 
when the Wrights were really still conducting business and running the Wright Company. So this was a great tragedy for Orville and the family. And Milton writes, this morning at 315, Wilbur passed away, aged 45 years, one month and 14 days. A short life full of consequence, an unfailing intellect, imperturbable temper, great self-reliance and his great modesty, seeing the right clearly, pursuing it steadily, he lived and died. Many called, many telegrams. And this was on Thursday, May 30th, 1912. It's a very formal, emotional tribute to his son. Um, a few days later, Milton actually writes with a lot shakier hand, Wilbur is dead and buried. We are all stricken. It does not seem possible that he is gone. Probably Orville and Catherine feel his loss the most. They say little. And I think that diary entry really demonstrates how this is a story of an entire family who went through a lot of different things in their lives, not just printing business and bicycles and flight, but a lot of tragedy and emotion and family ties and just a lot of interesting things that teach us something about what, was life, what life was like early in the 20th century.